On October 14th of 2024, NASA launched its Europa Clipper probe into the vast darkness of space, 483 million miles away from the Sun. Scientists have long believed that one of Jupiter's many moons, Europa, may be our best chance of finding alien life in our solar system. We're all familiar with the Goldilocks Zone and how a planet has to be within a very specific band of distance away from its star in order to support life. So how is it possible for one of Jupiter's moons, which sits so far away and only receives 4% of the sunlight that our planet does, to have life on it? Welcome to Future Scout. Today we're discussing the Europa Clipper mission and how scientists think it may fundamentally alter our entire perception of our place in the universe. Let's dive in. Europa Clipper is designed to be the most advanced probe to hunt for signatures that indicate the presence of alien life. It's surprising for a multitude of reasons, one of the main ones being that Jupiter is incredibly dangerous to everything around it, including machines. Deep inside Jupiter, pressures get so high that hydrogen gas is compressed into a liquid with metallic properties. This generates a magnetic field that dwarves our planets by 20,000 times. To put this into a visual context, if you could see the magnetic field, it would be larger than our full moon to the naked eye from the surface of the Earth. Particles from Io, another volcanic moon surrounding Jupiter, are constantly bellowing out sulfur dioxide which rotates in this magnetic field. The sulfur dioxide whirls around Jupiter at speeds of up to 300 kilometers per second, absolutely breakneck. These extreme conditions make sending any type of probe to the planet system extremely difficult. The speed of which these molecules runs causes them to slam into the other neighboring moons, which in turn ejects more materials. This stretches out the magnetic field even further, forming massive radiation belts that fry electronics, making a trip there virtually impossible. Even with the modern shielding technologies, a probe like Europa Clipper could only survive for roughly three months around Jupiter, and the plan is for this probe to scan its namesake moon for over four years without getting destroyed. So, how is this even possible? Well, NASA came up with a brilliant idea. Europa Clipper will take a highly elliptical orbit and pass by the moon every couple of weeks to scan and collect data from its passing. Once it leaves, it will put a safe distance between it and the moons while it processes and sends back the data it has collected to Earth. Then, it will return and repeat this loop for its entire mission, completing 50 flybys and mapping the entire surface of Europa in great detail. And while this helps to answer what the probe will be doing, it does not answer the question of how life could even exist on this icy moon out in space to begin with. The daily radiation that Europa receives is 1800 times that of Earth, hardly conducive for life. Clipper's predecessors, Voyager and Galileo, both spent time studying Jupiter and its moons, and they found that Europa had no craters meaning its frozen surface had changed somewhat recently, at least according to cosmological timeframes. Scientists estimate that this was something that happened sometime in the last 60 million years or so. Europa's magnetic poles also wobble, indicating an electrically conductive layer within the moon that reacts to Jupiter's magnetic field. This means something inside can conduct electricity and it's only estimated to be tens of kilometers deep buried under a frozen surface that conceals many mysteries inside. When scientists point a spectrometer to Europa, they tend to find signs that point to hydrated salts, sulfuric acid, or potentially even bacteria. JPL even discovered recently that sea salt will turn from white to brown when it exposed to intense radiation. This has further reinforced the hypothesis that there could be a saltwater ocean inside Europa that is estimated to contain twice as much water as the entire Earth. But this begs yet another question. How is it even possible that the entire planet is not simply frozen? How is there heat that thaws the ice beneath the surface of Europa? The key is an astronomy observation known as orbital resonance. When Ganymede, an outer moon of Jupiter, completes a single orbit, 
Europa, which is closer to the gas giant, completes two, and Io, the volcanic moon spewing out sulfur dioxide, completes four orbits in the same period. This means that Io tugs on Europa's orbit, and it brings itself closer to Jupiter on one side, while Ganymede tugs on it from the other, bringing its orbit into a highly choreographed ellipse. This stretches and compresses the planet according to where it is in this orbit, producing kinetic energy that is enough to heat up the water beneath the surface caused by this tidal flexing. The closer a moon is to Jupiter, the stronger this effect. Io bears the brunt of it, continuously producing volcanic activity, and it is believed this tidal flexing caused by this rhythm is what leads to the cracks found across Europa's surface. So that explains a lot in regards to how Europa is more than just a large snowball orbiting Jupiter, but how do these conditions even allow for the possibility of life? The answer may be a similar one to Earth, hydrothermal vents. These vents exist at the bottom of the ocean on Earth and life tends to accompany them. Bacteria from these vents tend to feed on the minerals that surround them rather than sunlight because of the fact that they are so deep in the ocean. Like the darkness in our own oceans, could Europa be creating the second generation of life in our solar system? The likelihood and odds seem significant enough that when the Galileo mission ended in 2003, over 20 years ago, the choice was made to crash the satellite into Jupiter, specifically not to corrupt results that we might obtain from Europa. And there is yet another moon that might harbor life as well, aside from Europa, the water geyser moon called Enceladus. NASA has captured images of enormous bursts of water erupting from the surface of this moon, while the Hubble telescope has picked up potential evidence of similar events on Europa. The hope is for one to go off while Clipper flies through it, determining its composition using a mass spectrometer. This means that there are two candidates for life surrounding the largest planet in our solar system. While Enceladus seems like it's just getting these processes started, Europa's radioactive bombardment actually provides opportunities for water and carbon dioxide to form new compounds that could serve as a food source for the primordial bacteria that potentially lives underneath its frozen surface. Clipper simply has to use its infrared spectrometer to look at the chemical fingerprints of light ricocheting off the surface and identify if there are organic compounds. On the flip side of this infrared coin, there is also an ultraviolet spectrograph that can be used to look for plumes that Clipper can fly through. We'll know much more about this high resolution data in 2031 when Clipper starts beaming back the initial findings to our own little blue marble. Is there life in our own cosmic neighborhood who will never know the warming light of our sun? Cosmic neighbors whose entire universe is constricted between a stretched and compressed core and an icy ceiling of darkness that shields them from the dark cosmos above. We'll find out in a matter of years. Thank you for watching Future Scout. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment to tell us what you think about the possibility of life inside Enceladus and Europa. We'll continue to bring you the best breakthrough discoveries straight to your YouTube feed. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.